Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, sorry I'm starting a few minutes late. I had um, some technical problems. Hey, that feels par for the course for a Monday. So um, anyway, I'm excited to be here and sharing a little bit. I'm going to be talking today about how um, I walk students through reading um, notation for recorder and like how not just like in general, but specifically how I help them sort of decode songs and look for patterns, similarities, differences, things that will help make um, reading and playing um, the recorder a little bit easier. That's coming up in just a second. Um, if you hear me talk about a book, a resource, something that you um, are interested in, um, and you hear me mention in the video, I probably put a link to it on the links page, which is a, a page on my blog where I keep all these links for things. You can go to makemomentsmatter.org and click the video tab to find those links, or you can just click the uh, caption at the bottom of wherever you're watching or listening to this video or podcast, whichever, however you're taking in this content. Um, also, there's a Facebook group if you're interested um, called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community, where you can uh, continue the conversation, ask questions, um, make friends, learn things. It's a, a great place. Come and join us. Okay, uh, one last thing. This is my second to last video of the semester because the semester is kind of winding up and um, I do 15 every semester. So this is the second to last one. Next week is my last one. And typically I devote that to questions, thoughts, ideas, any sort of um, questions you have or things you want me to talk about. Maybe it's something I've talked about already previously in the semester. Maybe I haven't. Um, maybe it's just something you're curious about. But um, I put up a quick Google form, so if you want to just drop your questions there, you can leave your name too if you want. Um, and if you um, if you leave me questions there, or I guess even in the comments of this video, um, I'll try and address all of that next Monday night. So leave your questions early so I can do my research and plan ahead um, and have examples. But um, that's next week, because next week's my last um, video of the semester. But if you want more learning, Guess what? I'm teaching ORF Level 1 in two places this summer, uh, both at um, the Orange County Public Schools and Central Florida ORF Chapter uh, levels, and also at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Um, one's at the beginning of the summer, one's at the end of the summer. So if you're interested in either of those, you can check those out um, by sending me a message or searching either CFOC, the Central Florida ORF Chapter levels, or UMSL for University of Missouri-St. Louis ORF and um You'll find it, or you just just email me, whatever. I'll send you info. Okay, so um, I want to talk about um, how I use um, uh, written notation with students. I do. I've talked a lot, or well, a lot. I've talked a couple of weeks ago about like improvisation and leading students through um, the first couple of weeks of recorder. But I wanted to talk about how um, I help them kind of decode the music and look for similarities, look for things that are different. Help just give them ideas of, of how to. Um, read and understand music to make it easier on them. So um, I have a couple examples of what I do with that. And the first one I'm going to show you is just a warm up. So my students know when they come in, I choose a student teacher, which is just, I name one of the students and they get to go pull out the box of recorders, call out students' names, because each of my students has their own recorder. It like lives in the music room for now. So that kid just goes back, starts handing out so that I'm not doing it. And then once kids get their recorder up on the board is a challenge. And on um, what their job is to try and read the note names, uh, do the finger practice, which is reading the notes or reading the notes and rhythms and playing on the recorder or moving their fingers on the recorder. And then the last thing is to play and they can play freely at their own speed, whatever, however they want until they hear ding, I'm going to play a little bell or something. And then they have to stop and we'll all start playing together. So, um, I let them play through and read on their own. And I want to show you sort of one, well, a couple of the examples of things, a leveled version an er, an easier one and a more complex one, uh, but similar. Um, that I use with kids and sort of show you uh, what that is and how I explain it. So let me see if I, I, like I said, I'm a little late today because of technology issues. So like, let's hope that this works. I don't know. We're going to find out real fast. Okay. So uh, let me flip this around. So this is a, a view of um, one of the things that I show kids um, when they come in. It's like their warm up. So as you can see, and if you can't see, I'll read it for you. The, it's just four measures with a repeat sign at the end. And the measures are um, G, 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 A, A, B, B, A, A, G, 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 A, A, B, A, G, G, G. And then it repeats, right? Okay. 
So pretty simple, um, pretty basic, uh, but this is for kids who have only learned B, A, and G, who are ready to sort of uh, work through. It's just written notation, not on a staff. It's just um, Taz and Titi's in a line with the note names written under it. So it's pretty simplified. I'm not having them read on the staff. This is a pretty early version, but what I want them to get out of this is I want them to feel confident playing. I want their tone to be very good. Um, I want them to think about um, note switching, stuff like that. So this is just an, an easy warm up that takes away the stress of oh, reading on the staff because honestly that involves a completely different part of your brain. Um, and so it sort of put you, for, for students, it sort of puts their, it makes their brain buffer a little bit more because they have to use more of their brain and it slows them down. So this is just an easy little warm up. Um, and so I'll just play it one time through um, so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so for those of you who aren't looking at the notation on this video, you're just listening to it on the podcast, that's sort of what it sounds like. So, um, but again, it's just written, no, it's just just uh, sort of uh, basic notation with the note name written underneath. So as kids work through that, I let them play through that. As they're working through, what am I doing while I'm wandering around? I'm reminding them like, okay, left hand on top, and I'm saying things like, ooh, good, but let's check your tone on the G, or you see your fingers sort of slipping off, there's air leaking out or whatever, you know, all the basic things you might do um, to talk with kids. But once we ding the bell, I say, okay, before we play this together, quick question. Um, I'm gonna ask you about this. So remember when we talk about this, we can say like measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four. Or I guess we could say line one, measure one, line one, measure two, line two, measure one, line two, measure two, just two ways to talk about it, right? Okay, because it's two lines for the four measures are spread across the two lines. So then I'll say something like of those four measures, are any of them exactly the same? Do you see any that are exactly the same? And hopefully, the, yes, they do. <laughs> So um, I have them raise their hand and answer that. Okay, so yeah, so measure th one and measure three are exactly the same. The rhythm is the same and the pitches are the same, right? G, 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 A, A. Okay, great. So those two are exactly the same. Um, are there any other measures that start the same but maybe end differently? Hopefully they'll say measure two and measure four because, well, actually no, because <laughs> measure two starts B, B, a, A. Measure four starts with B, A, G, G, G. So I'd be okay if they said that because it starts with a ta, ta, so quarter note, quarter note. And so they might say, well, the rhythm starts the same even though the pitches are different. Okay, that's a cool answer too. Um, I might also ask, which of these measures is the most difficult to play and why? And most of the time they're going to say measure four because B, A, G, G, G. So it has the most switching. Um, it's the most different from all the others. Um, so I would absolutely take that as an example. Then we, we play through it once where maybe I point as they play. And then usually I'll sit down at the piano and with a really simple little accompaniment and um, play, play along as they play through the song. Okay, so this is like early days recorder, right? So here's one that I used this week. So this is a this week example. Um, I'll read through the, it's all, it's the same rhythms, honestly, but the notes have changed. So now the notation is E, 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 G, G, A, G, A, G, E, 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 G, A, B, A, G, G, E. And I will play this for you now too, just so you can hear it. You might be like several weeks later why has it not changed rhythmically well because again if i want them to deal with more difficult content i need to balance out in some way so that they're not completely overwhelmed so instead of changing both the note names and the rhythms i'm leaving the rhythms pretty simple so that they can focus more on getting a really great tone on low e figuring out the fingering for low E, figuring out where to put their fingers and how to play that correctly, that is very important. So um, instead of making it difficult rhythmically and difficult with a new note, I've just simplified. If it were only B and A and G, I might do something longer or more rhythmic, but because it, I, I want them to focus on playing low E, I'm not doing that. Okay, so in this instance, again, I'd probably say, I'd let them play through, I'd talk through examples, I'd say, okay, left hand on top, right hand on bottom. And I'd say like, okay, well, let's check your uh, fingers, 
placement for E, you know, like all that sort of stuff as I'm walking around as kids are working through this on their own. Then once we talk about it together, once we're playing together, I might say, um, okay, so are any two measures exactly the same? And hopefully they're going to say no. And I might say, are any of two of them very, very similar? And hopefully they'll say measure one and three because it goes ta di ta di ta ta. So the rhythms are the same, but the pitches are not. Measure one goes e e e e g g. Measure three goes e e e e g a. So there's that one note of difference with a different pitch. Yes, that's tricky. It's a little different. So I would hope, hopefully, they would recognize that. I would then probably also have the same question as before. Which measure is the trickiest to play and why? And again, they're probably going to say measure four because B, A, G, G, E. You just you start with B and you have to keep adding fingers on. It keeps getting more difficult and you end on low E, which, oh my gosh, remember we talked about that's the, one of the squeakiest notes we have because um, you have squeakers and leakers troubles because leakers means air is leaking out around fingers because fingers are not placed in the exact right spot you can it's so many so so many places where you could have fingers out of alignment so um, that could be tr sort of tricky and then the other thing is uh, if you use the same same kind of air that you use for the letter b and a that you do for the letter e you're going to have squeaks so you've got to um, adjust that a little bit and think about how uh, when you get down to low e you got to have uh, like warmer breath, calmer breath than the breath you use for B and A. And then we'd probably, again, we'd talk through it, we'd play it maybe as I point along, and then I would sit down at the piano and accompany them um, as we work through. Okay, let me flip my camera around and we'll talk just a little bit more. Okay, so that is, oops, see if Instagram wants, so that is a warm up, right? Just a very simple, basic beginning thing. And then we might go into echoing we might go into student-led creation we might do improvisation like whatever else we wanted to do usually at the end of the lesson we work through different songs and pieces um, and sometimes it's really simple stuff sometimes it's more complex one of the things i found is that um, if i have a song that has like a backing track not just like me at the piano or me at an orf instrument or something else but if it's like got a like a legit backing track kids are like excited they are very excited because um because it, it feels like a professional song or whatever, you know? So um, I have a couple books that I wanna share um, and one I'm gonna show a couple examples from um, of books that I have used for many, 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 many years. And I'm gonna walk you through um, how I share a couple of those pieces with kids. Okay, so one of those books is this book called In the B.A.G. This is uh, published by Hal Leonard. It's by Janet Day. And I do have it linked on the links page if you want. I use many songs from here, you can see, because it's tabbed. Why do I like it? Because it's very simple. It's easy for them to decode. Um, it comes along with, um, so like if you open up to one of the songs, Hot Cross Fun. I use this everywhere with kids. It's basically Hot Cross Buns and then Hot Cross Buns inverted. So instead of B, A, G, B, A, G, 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 A, B, A, G, it goes G, A, B, G, A, B, 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 A, 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 G, A, B. It's got a fun accompaniment track very easy for kids okay so um that it let let's say you're using that song it also comes but with um an orf arrangement with uh percussion like pitch percussion or non-pitch percussion like shakers and drums um it also comes with a full piano score um that's that's easy if you want to accompany but it also comes with a cd maybe now they have digital downloads i've had this book a while i don't know but um, it also comes with a backing track which is very cool Okay, so let me show you a couple songs. Oh, wait, there's another book, sorry. Um, another book that Janet Day wrote um, is this book called All Aboard the, Accor the Recorder Express. There's volume one and volume two. I have volume one. I also have volume two somewhere. Um, volume one is just easy songs that you can use, all different levels of difficulty. So yes, it does have B, A, and G. It has uh, three songs that are exclusively B, A, and G, one that is exclusively B, A, G, plus low E, plus low D, and then there's a bunch of other variety uh, with high C and high D, um, different sorts of stuff. Um, again, all with um, recordings, with accompaniment tracks, with uh, pitch percussion and non-pitch percussion parts. There's a lot of variety. There are two volumes of this. Volume one is just sort of um, whatever all, all around the year or all through the year. Volume two is, I believe, holiday or season specific. But I couldn't locate that one when I was about to haul out of school to come home. So 
I'll check that later. But um, these two books, and I'm going to show you a couple examples out of in the BAG. Now, what I usually do is I usually um, take a picture of this or or put it under the, the document camera or whatever, and then I go and manipulate on the whiteboard. So I'm going to show you, hopefully, assuming technology works, I'm going to show you what it looks like to kids. I've got my little handy dandy. You know, I've, I've many times showed you this extendable thing you can put your phone in um, so it holds your phone over the um, table to take pictures. Anyway, uh, it's super duper handy and um, I use it for like taking videos of reading books and taking pictures of things, like whatever. It's super, it's like basically turns your phone into a document camera. Let's hope that my phone works. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of songs and sort of how I go through with kids and decode those. Again, ass assuming my technology works, let's hope. Okay, so it looks like, um, it looks like it works for Facebook. Let me move this for Instagram. Okay, so again, if I were doing this for real at school, it would be on um, on like the whiteboard projected up there so that kids can see a little better. Um, but, uh, okay, this is not focusing. That's great. See technology. We hope it works. Doesn't always work. But anyway, pretty good. So um, I would go with um, a whiteboard marker, but I'm just now doing it right now with... Um, uh, a flare tip because this is what I have at home and I'm doing it document camera style. You could do a document camera style too. Anyway, so we go through and here's how I uh, mark up Ola B-A-G. It's a song, it's very simple, just B and A and G. So I would say, okay, the first thing, let's just go through and let's figure out the note names. Okay, so this first one is G. Okay, so G, wait, that's also a G. Okay, but if you have a G right after a G, do I need to write the note name for the second one. I mean, it's right there. I'm, I'm not gonna, if it, if it happens right away, I'm not gonna write it again, just cause I know you, you can see that. Okay, so the next one's A. Oh, and then what's that? A half rest. Okay, a half rest. So that would mean two beats of silence. All right, the next one, ooh, B. Okay, we've got B. And then, oh, a re repeat, so I don't need to rewrite it. And then A. Okay, and then another rest, G. Okay, another G. And then down in the next line, there's an A, okay, and then a half rest, and then a B, and then a B, and then an A, and then a half rest. Okay, so then it says bo above the, the, the notes, it says box B. So that I think means that um, then we're in a new section. Okay, so let's just stop there for now because if we're in a new section, um, we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Okay, so hold on just a second. I I think I see a pattern in the A section. Do you see a pattern in the A section? I feel like I see something. And again, I'm I'm okay with student. I I would be okay with a couple answers here. I'd be okay if they said half note, half note, half note, half rest, half note, half note, half note, half rest, half note, half note, half note, half rest. I'd be okay with that. I'm also okay with them saying G G A B B A G G A. B, B, A, and if the pattern continued, it'd be G, G, A, B, B, A. Okay, so that's pretty simple, actually. Let's play that. So then we would go through and we'd play just the A section. G, G, A, B, B, A, G, G, A, B, B, A, and I probably would point along. The thing I don't like about this is the way it's laid out. Because they do this like indent thing here, it bumps this a it i mean it does you don't have one phrase in one line which i think could have been done but if i wanted to rewrite it for myself i could but i don't whatever i'm lazy i'm not gonna do that but um i think the types that could have changed uh, um and then that all could have been on one line because it it sort of breaks the g g a the second um instance of that across a system which i think is just frustrating but it, it does it it then is interesting to see if kids can see that pattern because sometimes seeing from the last measure of one system to the first measure of the next is hard for them to like see that and realize that that is connected so anyway so it's sort of fun to see them make that connection so sometimes I might also go in with another color marker and I might do something like G G A G G A B B A B B A. So the G G A I underlined with one color, the B B A I underlined with another color, just so they can see that it repeats and where it comes back. Okay, let's go to the B section and see what they got. So let's see, we've got B A. And again, I would let kids look and figure this out and call out these note names. I wouldn't just give it to them right away. I would let them sort of figure that. So half note B, half note A, G quarter note. 
quarter rest, half rest. Okay, and then B, A, G, rest, rest, rest. B, A, G, rest, rest, rest. B, A, G. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so hold on. I think Janet. I think our composer Janet Day. Okay, and. Janet, if you're watching this, <laughs> listening to this, I somehow don't think you will. But if you're watching or listening to this, I love your work. But I do badmouth you to kids. I, I say, oh my gosh, look at what Janet did. This whole first section, all she did was write four measures and then just repeated it. That's kind of lazy. That's kind of like, okay, okay. But it does sound good. It does sound good. Maybe that's just like a smart way to compose. Like you like write one thing and then you repeat it. Okay. But then look at the B section. She does it again. Janet just writes these two measures she likes and then repeats it, repeats it, repeats it. It's like, how many times does that happen? Once here, once second there, here's the third. She does it four times, B, A, G, just four times in a row. Janet, Janet, you could do, oh, you could do better. Come on, Janet. Okay. Well, anyway, let's go on. So then we've got, let's see, um, G, G, a, oh, I don't like the sound of this. This is feeling too familiar. Okay, B, B, A, rest. Oh my gosh, G, G, A. Is this the exact same as the beginning? Hold on, B, A, G, G. Okay, that is not the same. But hold on, if you look, if you look, like, and again, I might mark it up in another color. You, you know, what you could maybe say, oops, and I just dropped a pen. You know, what you could maybe say, starting right here at the G G A, you could almost call this like A prime or or like the second A because basically we're back to the beginning because you've got um, G G A B B A G G A, and then this last part, this is different. That's not exactly the same. But it's it's similar. It's similar. So it almost feels like going back to the very beginning, which is kind of crazy. So you almost have like an A B A big form for this song. Like not exactly, but but almost. Okay, so that is this. I think Janet, our composer, is kind of wimping out here because I she could have written more, but I guess I we'll have to listen to it and see how it goes because I don't know. She she did a lot of copying. Oh gosh, other things we need to look at. There's a repeat sign at the end. Don't forget that. Oh, and then this here at the beginning. Okay, hold on. Let's talk about that. Because if you, um, so this big, long black thing. So if you have um, one of these, uh, that's a what? And they're like, it's a half rest. Oh, sorry, Instagram, you can't see that. Um, that's a half rest. Okay, what if you had uh, one of these? And they're like, okay, that's a whole rest. Great. Okay, so what she could, what our composer could have done here at the beginning is she could have written um, whole rest, bar line, whole rest, bar line, whole rest, bar line, whole rest, bar line. She could have done that. She could have done four whole rests in a row, but that takes up quite a bit of space. So one of the cool things that you can do, well here and I'll show you, is um, you can make this kind of long, um, long thick line with these like two edges on it. And then you can put, um, you can you can tell how many measures you, what, just say like these, the, comp the whole measure, you just rest for the whole thing. And, but I want you to do it four times. So that's basically saying like, this is basically equals um, four half rests, or sorry, four whole rests. So like that, well here, sorry, I keep flipping pages, I'm really sorry about that. I would again, if this were in my classroom, I would just do this on the whiteboard right next to the projection. So this long symbol here equals four whole rests. So at the beginning, that's your introduction, is four measures of silence. Okay, cool. So with all this notation, with all this markup, we would then go through and play. We would, we would again talk about where do you see similarities, where do you not? And I'd say, this is a super easy song to play. All you have to figure out how to do is play the first four measures, B, G, G, A, B, B, A, and then repeat it a bunch of times. And then in the B section, all you have to figure out how to do is B, A, G, and then repeat that a bunch of times. The only thing that's different is the last two measures. And that's even easy to do. It, that even kind of reminds me of the first two measures of the B section. Gosh, when I first looked at it, this this seemed like a pretty long, tricky song. But actually, now that I look for all these like patterns and things that keep coming back, this is like not that hard at all. Ooh, okay. So then we would probably play through. And then one thing that I add to this song is I add in the B section instead of just B A G, I add a staccato on each G. We talk about what that is. B 
because guess what? In another example we're doing, we, we have a dotted note, so it's like fun to contrast the staccato with the dotted note. Um, and and it's, it's very simple for them to sort of see those in contrast and be able to play both. Also being able to lead them through the difference between a staccato on recorder and like a blasted, um, you know, like accent is, is I think an important and wonderful thing. So um, we talk through that and then we play it. We play once with me pointing along and then again, it repeats. So it's sort of a little bit longer than they feel like, except the tempo is bum, 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 bum. So it goes fast. I know it's half notes, but it goes fast. Um, and so we play through once with me pointing, and then maybe I will play on a tenor recorder so they can hear a little bit of a contrast, but still follow along. Or maybe I will play on the piano, or maybe I'll just play soprano recorder. But um, I, I play, we play the recording. There is a recording with a recorder track and one without recorder track, so they can have just the accompaniment or the accompaniment with the recorder voice in there. Okay, another one I'm gonna show you just really, really, really quick, because I um, made the copy, so why not? Um, is, is Mambo Mary's BAG. We go through and do the same thing where we go through and identify all the notes of these first two systems, and I, we just go through reading the note names and figure out all the note names. I mark in on top of the box what those are. And I go, do you guys know what this song is? They're like, nope, we don't know. I say, okay, well, just play this first section, just the A section. And it is Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's why it's Mambo Mary's B-A-G, because it's Mary Had a Little Lamb with like a Latin beat, but then they change some things in the middle. Um, so that's fun for them to like read the note names, figure out, and then figure out it's a song they already know. So they can like, it. it I mean, that's just like good teaching of reading not just like music reading but reading in general where it's something that maybe they know to expect but then can also see what that looks like in written notation so it gives them a chance to like verify what they already know against what they see so they play through that and then the b section is really an accompaniment where the melody will show up in the accompaniment and then they get to accompany so here this includes um, ties across a bar line which is very interesting for them to do um, and we play through all of that again there's a repeat sign um, the little tag at the end of the little coda mimics the um, first line of the song, which is cool. And at the end, there's this little part that goes bum, 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 bum. And I say, okay, so it's kind of weird to have like, have a whole note and then a rest, two eighths and a quarter and a rest. It's like, it's like, it's like, bum, bum. Ta -di -ta. It's kind of weird, but you know what? The what will help you if you just say na cha cha cha. If you just think cha cha cha, it's you're gonna play those exact the right moment. But again, I go through and I mark up all the note names. We talk about the different sections. We work through them in pieces. We add little helpful things like the cha cha cha, and don't forget the repeat sign. And we look for patterns. We look for places where the O C D S ties. This happens twice. It's the same sort of. Uh, melodic movements, the same sort of melodic contour, or like you can know what to expect in this first section. It's just a, a simple way um, to help them figure out how to play the song and move them through, making it just slightly more complex. Again, having the backing track um, makes it more interesting for them, and they, they like playing it because they like feel like, I kind of know this song. Um, but it's just a little bit more complex and really fun and easy for them to decode. I really value going in and um, helping them look for similarities, helping them look for patterns, helping them identify places that will be tricky. Um, and so that's why in the warm up I said like, which measure do you think will be the hardest to play? And I asked them that because I want them to start thinking about this will be easier, this one might be tricky. Well, if it's tricky, what do I need to do to modify? What do I need to change? It just helps them play better. So I'm not just throwing content at them. I'm, I'm giving them opportunities to play and then asking them as they're playing, like, okay, think about this. Is this going to be easy? Is it not? Why not? How do you change it? Yada, yada, yada. It, it gives them skills that are, are very helpful. Okay. Both of those songs were from In the BAG by Janet Day, who I really do. I really do love, even though to the kids, I'm like, oh my gosh, Janet, you keep copying yourself. Why do you do that? But actually, Janet, I kind of like that because, you know, it helps me find patterns and when I when I've already played it before then I feel better about playing it again like I say those literal exact things to kids so I I I do give Janet a hard time but then we play um I don't know what's the one that we play twinkle twinkle little star and I go Mozart you just kept copying yourself but I mean it worked it's a classic but Mozart oh my gosh you keep copying because we talk about how it's an ABA and in the B section it's just 
two, one phrase and then the exact identical phrase copied again. So we, I say, well, you know, if Mozart can do it, I guess Janet can do it too. Anyway, so I, I really like these books. They're fun and easy to decode with kids. The other thing I love is that, I don't know if you noticed this when you were seeing this on the overhead sort of thing. Um, it says, this page may be further photocopied by choirs or groups within purchasers institution only. This provision does not confer any other rights to the purchasers institution. But it means that I can copy these and share these with kids if I want, if I have the book. The books are not terribly expensive. I put a link to them on the links page, um, but there's in the BAG, which I would get first if I were if I were getting these again, if I were recommending them, and I am. Um, and then I would say All Aboard the Recorder Express 1. If you love all these three, then get All Aboard the Recor Recorder Express 2. Um, and there's like a little bit of overlap, like Hot Cross Fun is in both of these. And... Recorder wrap is in both of these, but otherwise there's not a lot of overlap. Like it's it's pretty much new content for each book. So check them out if you're interested. All right, this is my last week talking about recorder. Um, next, well, I guess not. Next week I'm, is my last video of the semester. If you have specific questions, please use that Google form, um, which I put on the links page and I'll put in the comments for Facebook um, to help you all find that. But um, ask your questions because next week I'm going to try to just answer questions. And, and um, if you have questions about a lesson I've already taught this semester or something else or an extension or you're just interested in anything, um, let me know and I will um, talk about that next week in my last Musical Mondays video. All right. Thanks for coming along with me, everyone. And I will see you all next week for the last Musical Mondays video. All right. Bye, everyone.